Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Super Mario game in Unity and welcome to episode 20. So the, this was originally going to be the last episode of this series but I decided there would be a couple more things that I would want to teach you guys. So this isn't the last episode. This episode we're going to specifically look at creating score and if you probably haven't noticed already my voice may sound a little bit different. Uh, my voice decided to go this morning and it's kind of coming back but here we are recording anyway. So score is something that we need to piece together and keep a global count of and score is affected by various things within the game i.e. killing enemies, time and whatnot. So firstly let's go to our first scene and work just with this one for now. So in the scripts folder right click create a new script and we'll call it global score. So this script itself is going to contain um, any possible way of obtaining a score and adding to it. So if we open the script up in Mono Develop or Visual Studio, whichever one you have, we'll be declaring three variables. The first one is going to be a static variable because we want to reference this in other scripts as well. So if we clear everything it's given us, what we need to do is static var and we'll call it current score and colon and that's going to be an integer so int semicolon next one we have the internal version of it so var internal score sorry <laughs> yeah internal score we'll call it yeah I think that's best isn't it and that will also be int the last one is going to be a game object that we can display our score on on the screen. So, bar, score, display, game object, semicolon. So we're going to be using the function update in this one. So, function, update, open close bracket, open curly bracket. We're going to make internal score equal to current score. So the reason we do that is because we can see in the inspector panel what the score is at any given time. Next what we need to do is make the score display display the actual score. So score display dot get component dot and in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals and we'll make it say score with a colon space quote and then plus internal score semicolon close curly bracket and save so the idea of what we're doing here is we're going to make different scripts make current score add up so we kill an enemy we add 100 we finish the level, we times that by 10 and add that to our score and then it puts it into the internal score and then displays that on our screen. <clears throat> so next thing we need to do is we need to create the UI to display the score. So game object, UI, text. Let's double click so we can see and I think I'm going to put this in the top right so let's set the anchor point top right zero out the position and then let's move it where we want it about there so let's type score zero set it as white and let's increase the font size to about 20 maybe drag it this way a little so i'm going to save that scene so next thing we need to do is we need to add the global score script to a game object. So game object, create empty, F2, global score obj, short for object. And then just drag and drop global score onto there. And then we need to set the score display. If we can find it in our list. 
fact, probably best to rename it. Let's call it score display. And we just need to put that variable in there. We've done this many times before. We know how this works. So now we have that set. What we'll do now is we'll make um, our coins further down. So if we go to this down here, let's make each of these coins worth 10 points. Well, 10 to the score. So on the coin pickup script over here, double click it. And what we need to do is the very last line we put global score dot current score plus equals 10 semicolon. So this now adds 10 every time we pick up a coin. So let's save that script and let's press play and try it out. Oops, helps if we get on there properly. So now we should see our score increase. There we go. So the same applies to the enemies. So if we go to our mushroom map, just here. And we need, um, what's it going to be? Mushroom Man Death here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So on this script, all we would do is just before the yield, we need to add, let's say, 100 to our score. So global score dot current score plus equals 100 semicolon and save and now let's try this out oops i missed him and there we go we've added 100 so there are other, other ways of actually doing it as well there are other things which will give you score but specifically let's add our remaining time that we have left at the end of the level to our score so we need to go to our counting down script which is this one here <coughs> excuse me so in this script all we need to do is we need to apply a little bit of logic we need to add in an extra variable which is going to be a static one so static var time left and that's going to be an integer semicolon and now what we need to do is in the function update we need to make time left equal to total time this makes the total time theoretically available to us via a different script so at any given time the time left is equal to total time so now if we save that script and go to the level ends folder and end 1 1 all we need to do is we need to add in some more variables here so end 1 1 if we add a variable here <clears throat> let's call it time score semicolon and that's going to be an integer and we'll do um should we do another one? Well, we'll do another one just in case so var time left um just put time left int and we'll just have that as an integer so once we've entered it what we'll do is we'll make time left int equal to um what was our script that we went to it was counting down wasn't it counting down dot time left so now what we do is time score is equal to time left int 
multiplied by 10 semicolon and then the final thing to do would be to add that to our score which would then automatically display it so to do that it's global score dot current score equals sorry plus equals time score semicolon and save so now when we play, press play <clears throat> if we get to the end of the level we should see our score Ooh, it would actually help if um i don't think we've got our time on this level have we so let's set up our time quickly because i think we missed that out so if we go to level two save and on our canvas here um i think we have it is it in the middle yeah so it's that one there so if we take this one and we take the uh, time management object so if we take the time management so if we copy that go to level one paste we just need to put these in here so game object ui text let's put it in the middle center let's have it as 20 let's have it as white so i'm doing this really quickly you can take as much time as you need to so let's get that into the correct position Bring it down just a little to about there. How's that look? Okay, yep, that's fine. So now let's quickly set our time management. So time management. Uh, so we need the death sound, which is on our main camera. So audio, death sound, level music, which is overworld, cam follow, which is the main camera, and the player, which is obviously the player. So now let's press play. So it's that simple to get your score working in any level. So as we get to the end here, we should be able to see that our score will indeed actually become 2000 and something there we go so our score did change there right at the end so the final thing we're going to need to do is get this score rolling throughout the entire game so to do that let's save that scene let's go to level two game object ui text and let's recreate this um system here so we just do score zero Let's change it to 20 and we had it as white uh, anchor top right let's zero that out and bring it into position which is let's have it about there so you can take as much time as you need i'm just rushing this now so game object create empty <clears throat> f2 and let's just call it um global score obj same as we did in the last one and we just need to attach the global score to that object and then set the score display which is this one let's quickly rename this so now what we should have is if we save that scene go to our first level <clears throat> and whatever score we have here will roll over into the next level so uh, let's, hopefully this should work first time. Nearly there. So score is 2850. And we should start here with the same, 2850. So that's how you keep your score rolling throughout time. So last thing we actually need to do that, I did say that was the last thing, but I've realized one more thing. When we die, we want our score to go back to zero. So all you would need to do <clears throat> is in the scripts folder, death scripts, and on level zero one death, you just need to put a quick statement in there. Uh, let's put it just after that last yield. 
and let's put global score dot current score equals zero semicolon and save so the same will also apply to our counting down script so if it gets to the point where we have uh, no time left whatsoever so again after this yield wait for seconds we just need to put the same line global score dot current score equals zero so it resets the score and save so that's pretty much all there is to scoring on um, th this style of game you can add their score system to many other things and you can also create different enemies worth different scores and you can play around but as long as you always maintain that global score script you'll be able to add your score up so next episode is going to be the last one we're going to look at the boss stage area so we're we'll looking at the camera freezing and having for example a larger enemy that we can deal with and we'll also look at building the final game to play so guys until that episode thank you very much for watching